Hello, my name is Ben Morgan, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a waving flag in Blender. Let's get started. We're also, uh, well, first we're going to begin with uh, deleting our cube. So delete the cube. Shift A, add mesh plane. That will add in a plane that we can then scale on the x-axis. Press Control to make it snap to the grid. And then rotate it with R on the x-axis. Press X and click 90 degrees. Perfect. Next, what we're going to do is tab into edit mode. And before we subdivide anything, we're going to press Control R and add in a loop right there to make this rectangle two squares. We're then going to subdivide it so that everything is a square. And that makes it a lot easier in the end. Don't subdivide it too much like I did or else uh, your sim uh, may run very slowly. Uh, next, why don't we just go ahead and press um, view uh, align to view, uh, or control alt zero. <laughs> I was looking for the uh, shortcut for that in the view. Okay, so this is going to be on a flagpole, so we might as well just make it look a little bit more realistic. Shift A, add mesh cylinder, size it, press S, Shift Z to scale it on everything but the Z axis, so that you can get a nice narrow pole and grab it over on the x-axis and move everything up and move the bottom down. So we got a flagpole. That's all of the uh, setting up we will do for that. Oh, what happened here? Oh my. It looks like I did not select all of the points. So why don't we just do that again? That guy's good. Okay. Uh, there we go. So we're all set up. Why don't we just zoom this camera in a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was probably really loud. Okay, so before we go ahead and set up our cloth simulation, we have to do a couple things. The first thing we have to do is select, uh, in edit mode, tab into edit mode, select these edge vertexes right here, go to the active data, whatever that is, the triangle, and uh, click Add, Add a Vertex Group, and assign those selected vertices to that group. What that will do is kind of pin the cloth to that area. We're going to set it later um, to pin our fabric to this pole um, so that it sticks to it and doesn't just fall right down. And that will enable us to get a simulation. OK, uh, next what we're going to do is just smooth shade our object so that it will look a little better. Okay. But now we can get into the real reason why you came to this tutorial. Go to the physics panel and enable cloth. And before we do anything, let's just set pinning uh, to be enabled and make it group. And why don't we just press play and see what happens. Okay, so it looks really bad. One reason is that the quality is so bad, our plane is hardly subdivided and we have nothing, um, it's not colliding with itself. So. To do that, you have to expand Cloth Collision and enable Self Collision, which will then make it a little tiny bit better, but not by too much. Uh, we actually can go in and subdivide it one more time. Um, that will give us, yeah, see it, then it lags too much. It's because I'm recording. Um, but OK, so that's fine. I'm going to set the shading to flat on mine just so I don't, yeah. Okay, but we want our flag blowing in the wind, right? We don't want it just laying down like that. It looks terrible. So why don't we just add in some wind? Shift A, add force field wind. We're going to rotate it on the y-axis and have it pointed a little bit up um, just so that it kind of gets it a better angle. And move it a little bit and rotate it so that it's a little bit in front. Again, that will make it so that it is at a better angle for the wind. You have to really increase the strength for this to something like 200. And let's increase the noise a little bit so it's not just a full steady stream. And if you look at it now, our flag reacts to that wind. And it's already sort of looking like a flag in the wind, which is really neat. Let's smooth shade it, see if it looks any better. It doesn't really. Uh, I'd have to go in and add in a subsurf modifier. Um, but again, make sure optimal displays. Enabled. That's really going to slow up my... Oh, no, it's not. Okay. 
So it's not too bad. If you go in and add in a subsurf modifier, it will make it look a little bit better. Okay, go, go back to your physics panel. Okay, so there are a few things we can do with this cloth. We can increase the quality, and that will give us, you know, some a little bit more realistic results, more flapping and stuff like that. Um, you can incre decrease or increase the mass. Um, that will make it so that it's not as affected by the wind. If you um, put it like 0.1, it's really going to flap in the wind like it's silk or something. Structural, um, the stiffness of it. So if you decrease that, it's going to be really bendy, really... Oh my, that's not good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it would. Uh, it kind of stretches it out actually, which is kind of neat. Uh, but we're gonna keep that at 15, just because we don't want it really stretching out like that. Um, and then we have bending. If you look at the description, it says the wrinkle coefficient higher is less smaller but more big wrinkles. So we want kind of a mixture. So why don't we put it at like 0.25 or something? See what that gives us. So that gives us some smaller wrinkles and that's pretty cool let's increase the mass a little bit because right now it's kind of uh yeah that looks good next we have spring which uh basically uh the higher you put it it's going to be uh very kind of it says more smooth less jiggling so that's pretty cool that that kind of works with a flag uh, but let's put that at like 10 or something that's fine. Air basically makes it so that it will have uh, some air. Um, it's how much the air will slow it down when it falls, but we don't really need to worry about that. Uh, velocity. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so basically something cool we have here is called pre-roll. If you start our animation, you'll see that it takes about 30 frames for our clock to start up. It's falling. It falls down and then it get, finally gets caught by the wind. So if we wanted 250 frames of our guy, um, our flag flapping in the wind, we'd have to start it a little bit earlier, So or you could just extend, obviously, the length of the simulation. But why don't we just pre-roll this 30 frames so that if you, uh... oh, that's interesting. Oh, uh, undo. Okay, that kind of ruined everything. Oh, I think to do if you do pre-roll, I believe that you have to go to cloth cache and bake all dynamics. So we could do that later though. Cloth collision, uh, we're down to this. Um, increase the quality a little bit, but with uh, flag, it's not going to collide with itself all too much, so that's fine. Self collision, you can leave at pretty low quality, um, and it won't slow down your simulation that much. Okay. So say we had our flag all flapping in the wind and we really liked how it looked. Let's save it first, actually. Uh, flag, two. okay. So say we wanted to map an image of America onto this flag. <laughs> okay, to do that, first you need to get a texture of an American flag. So to do that, you can always just uh, go to Google and let me just sign out. Uh, go to Google and type in American American flag. Okay, and you can see here, uh, let's go to search tools, increase the size. Obviously, you could use something like CG textures, but we're just going to do a simple flag like this. American flag texture. Um, let's see, something that's good. Um... I guess that's fine. The original image, save image as go to Blender, Blender textures, flag. Okay, so save it in my UV uh, folder. Okay, back to Blender. Now we're going to tab in edit mode, uh, make a new window right here, make this UV image editor, and open image, go to Blender, find where you save that, uh, image and open up flag and you'll see here that we have our flag and if I press control Z right now you won't be able to see it but if I move my light over 
you'll see that I now have a bajillion different flags on my <laughs> object because it's not unwrapped yet. So if I do U, unwrap, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of scaling. So uh, let's see. Scale around the 2D cursor uh, right here. Uh, by default, it was set to bounding box center. But the cool thing is that our cursor is set right at the corner right there. So if we do scale on the cursor, SX, we're going to be able to snap it uh, with control two, um, or with control, sorry. And uh, we'll be able to get it to fit exactly with our image. So now uh, in textured view, you can see that we have our flag mapped right onto it. And if we were to play our animation, it would stick to the UVs and we would have an awesome flag. So that's pretty neat. Now I'm not sure, yeah, you can see here that if you duplicate it, our flag is not two-sided. Now there is a way to make two-sided textures. Uh, if you go to the materials and you add a new material for that flag, I believe it might, it is, uh, let's see, object color, face textures maybe, face texture, oh shoot. Should have looked into this. Um, there is a way to enable two-sided textures in Blender. I do know that. I'm not 100% certain how. Um, actually, why don't we go to our textures panel, and that would probably be a better place to look. Add in an image or mu movie texture. Make it flag. Uh, let's see. Image mapping. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I'll click X, Y. And then two-sided. I do not see a two-sided texture, but I'm sure a quick Google search for two-sided textures in Blender would give you the answer to that question. But if we were to then uh, save this and enable some ambient occlusion or something, and if we were to render it, you'd see that we have the, uh, the beginnings of a pretty cool um, American flag simulation. So, okay. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, my name is Ben Morgan, and if you like this video, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Um, I hope you learned something, and yeah, thank you for watching.